plays at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. It's talk, time to talk about linebackers, Alex. Linebackers. Uh, 49ers linebackers that are going to be free agents. And there's a couple of questions here. Uh, so we're going to get a lot. We have a lot to go get into, um, especially with ESPN floating around the Drake Greenlaw trade situation. It's nonsense, Ant. It's nonsense. Don't it's, like not, it. it's not happening. It's not happening. We're not doing it. I refuse to believe that the Niners are going to be trading Dre Greenlaw under any circumstances, any way, shape, or form. In all honesty, I truly believe the contract extension is going to be coming up in the works. And you know what? We can talk a little bit about, you know, maybe what that would look like and and what it's going to be because I think there's actually a very good comparison out there. Uh, Devondre Campbell from the Green Bay Packers, his market value has already been spe- set by spot track, and he had himself one heck of a season and was an all-pro, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we can see what those numbers are going to look like and. Maybe what the Niners could get away with with Dre Greenlaw coming off of an injury-riddled 2021 campaign. But first and foremost, let's talk about the actual free agents, the guys who are going to be going onto the market and the Niners are going to have to try and resign. First and foremost, you have Marcel Harris. Safety converted to linebacker year one. Has he done enough to be brought back onto this roster, Ant? And what would it look like contract-wise, do you think? Well, considering you made the league minimum $1.2 million, uh, League minimum for a veteran. I think that they they would be willing to bring him back at that amount of money uh, because he did add a lot in the linebacker room, but where he really added his value was on special teams as well. The question will be, how is the Achilles? He's dealing with Achilles tendonitis, and we know those things can flare up. The fact he was not available for the end of the football season uh, makes you somewhat wonder. So they're going to have to feel comfortable with his health, uh, but he's a guy that has a lot of flexibility, and really in the first year of playing the position, I thought did a very good job. In fact, I thought he improved a lot during the season, You could be hopeful that a guy like Marcel Harris could get out there um, and play. And the way that the league is trending, where it's more and more nickel situations, having a linebacker like Marcel Harris that can go out there and cover um, is something that you need. And he's very dynamic around the ball, uh, especially in open space. He helps stop screens um, and makes tackles, you know, in the flats. I think he's somebody they could definitely have value in and could be definitely interested in bringing back. I agree with you on that, my guy. Um, It just kind of makes sense. Uh, this is a guy who's got one year of experience under his belt as a linebacker. Um, I don't know if a lot of teams are going to be wanting to take a chance on him as at going back to safety. And I don't know if he's put enough on tape for teams to be like, yeah, this guy is a guy we can build around in our linebacker room. So because of that, the Niners are in a position where you're going to be able to bring this guy back in for the minimum, bring him back in for not a whole heck of a lot of money, and have a guy that's going to contribute one in the special teams already at a very high level. Because Marcel De Harris does contribute at a very high level in, in kick coverage, punt returns, uh, you know, just punts downfield, kickoffs as well. Um, he's absolutely incredible on special teams. And a guy who's continued to show some promise, at least, in the linebacking court. This is a guy who started some football games for you on a team that went to the NFC Championship game in the middle of the season and has definitely developed. Yeah, he struggled early on, but he got better as the year progressed. Um, you know, if you have a situation where maybe you can't bring back and bring in the Z's Al Shire back, if, you know, it's going to end up costing you too much money, even though that's a little bit harder. It's going to be a little bit harder for the 49ers to lose him because he's a restricted free agent, and we'll get to that here in a little bit. Um, but if they decide to move on from a guy like Aziz, Marcel has developed enough that you got to feel a little bit better about what he's going to be and what he's going to be be doing and, and you know, how far he's come already because he's come a long way from safety to, to linebacker with no experience um, to starting some football games to developing and, and showing some positive things. The real question is going to come down to health. Yeah, and I think it also comes down to um, you know, how much you want to pay these guys because, yeah, they they always earn a little bit of money. And you have the questions about with everyone going to nickel or with everyone putting the 49ers in nickel situations, how much do you want to pay a third or fourth linebacker? Um, and that's where we're going to get into the questions with Aziz as well because you know you already got Dre Greenlaw. You've got you know Fred Warner. Uh, with the amount of times that you have a third linebacker on the field at about, what, 20 25% of the time, uh, it changes some things. So I think they have some decisions to make, but I think they'd like to keep the depth the same. It's always a possibility they'll go out and draft somebody and develop them. True. Um, they did that with Dre Greenlaw. You know, of course, Marcel Harris ended up that way. Flanagan Fowles was also a guy that played safety in college that they developed. Um, so them going out and grabbing some developmental pieces, but usually it takes a couple of years for those guys to show up. Because he's Al Shayer, Flanagan Fowles, uh, Marcel Harris, all of them developmental pieces that are now in your linebacker room. I still think are all you know recently or decently cheap options that you can keep on your. Uh, 
Uh, agreed with you there. And speaking of Flanagan Fowles, it's another guy who's going to be a free agent coming up on this year. However, he's an exclusive rights free agent, meaning the Niners are the only team, the only one that gets to negotiate with him, uh, barring them not wanting to do so. I would be stunned, especially with D'Amico Ryan's coming back as the DC. I would be absolutely stunned if this guy isn't here in San Francisco, because if you don't want to deal with him, we know for a fact a guy like Robert Sala, who loves himself some Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, would be looking to bring him in over there with the Jets. Um, he's not going to cost you a whole lot. He made 780 k this past season. This is a guy you could definitely bring in on the cheap. And, and like you talked about, with teams putting the Niners in nickel, you really not needing a third, third linebacker out there in space. And we saw what Aziz al Shayer developed into, Ant. We saw what he developed into after two or three seasons. This upcoming season would be number three for Demetrius Flanagan Fowles. Could he make the similar type of jump that Aziz made? Oh, he could. I mean, I think Demetrius Flanagan Fowles is moving in the right direction. You're right, he's a cheap option. So you're going to be willing to bring him back. Anytime they're a cheap option and there's somebody that's familiar with your system, someone you see developing in a positive way, you're going to want him on your roster. Uh, I think right now he got some significant playing time, you know, when there was injuries. And you can somewhat feel comfortable. Sure. Besides the Chicago game, I feel like Flanagan Fowles really played well. But once again, huge value on special teams. Um, so that's another reason why he can be on this roster because uh, Flanagan Fowles and Marcel Harris are guys we talked about all year about the, what they can do on the special teams, how they help the kickoff team, the punt team. Um, so you want these guys on your team. And for the amount of money that they're making, there's just too much value in that. The juice is definitely worth the squeeze on bringing these guys back. Plus, you always hope that there can be a, even more continued development, that Flanagan Fowles can actually step up even even a bigger way as he's made his transition from safety to linebacker over the last few years. Um, and you, we got to remember, he did miss an entire season because of injury. So um, he had had a setback, but now he's moving forward. And I think that you know he's somebody they wouldn't mind holding on to. The real question for him is going to be when the 49ers get to draft time or the 49ers hit free agency, um, do they bring in somebody that's just a little bit better than him? I think he's going to have to battle. He's going to have to compete. But I wouldn't be surprised if he's on the 90-man roster. In fact, I'd be surprised if he wasn't. That was That's my thing as well. If, if um, Demetrius Flanagan Fowles is not on the 90-man roster, it would be an absolute shock to me, but I also think it would say a lot about where they think his development is and that he's behind schedule and not where they wanted him to be at this point in time. But neither one of us expects him not to be on the 90-man right. roster going on to the season. Will he make the 53-man roster? All depends on what other moves are made. Uh, but you know, him being an exclusive rights free agent means you're going to be able to bring him in on the cheap. Um, he can only negotiate with you. If you want him back, you're going to get him back. He's just going to have to take what he can get. And if he wants a bigger contract going forward, he's going to have to earn it. He's going to have to go out there and prove it. Um, yeah. And look, that puts the Niners in a good spot. It puts Demetrius in a good spot as well because this is a place he's familiar with. Um, he has a role on special teams already locked in and dialed in. Um, so it's really about his continued development at the linebacker spot. And his continued development may push out someone like a Marcel Harris, who is only maybe only has a year that doesn't have that same exclusive rights. If someone else is viewing him and valuing Marcel Harris and thinks there's potential there, they may be willing to pay him a little bit extra. And maybe the Niners then aren't able to. I don't think either one of us believes that's going to be the case. No. Maybe barring the Jets and Robert Sala? I, I don't think they're going to offer him more money. What they could offer him maybe is a starting position. You know, maybe he can True. Um, get lured in to be able to you know start on somebody's linebacker group. Especially a team that's developing and rebuilding. Yeah, I think that's a possibility. You know, and they know that they're going to get some special teams value out of him as well. Um, but maybe he's an improvement to their roster when the 49ers sees a backup. Uh, those are situations, yeah, that you could see him you know, excelling in. But I think overall... Um, if it comes down to money matching money, he'll probably come back to the 49ers because he knows what his role is and he knows that he's going to have opportunities to play and he's going to be able to play on special teams. Um, so, yeah, I think that Marcel Harris is a candidate to come back. But you're right, you know, for the right offer, the right the right deal, him being able to play, maybe he you know could look for greener pastures. Um, so it'll be up in the air, but that means finding in fouls is even more important for the 49ers to bring. Uh, agreed with you there, Ant. And now comes Aziz Al Shire. A guy that you and I both thought at the way he was playing and everything else, um, this is a guy who is for sure going to be around long term. Now, here's the good news for the 49ers. He is a restricted free agent, which right. means no matter what, you can match. You can match and bring him back. So if someone wants to pay this man a buttload ton of money, uh, more than maybe you were hoping to have to pay him, you're going to be able to match, and it's not the end of the world. I don't think either one of us expects him to get a butt ton of money, but could you see him making closer what Dre is supposed to be pulling in this year that some team out there could offer him a two and a half million dollars a season to come in and be a linebacker for them. And the Niners would be forced to have to match that. And in that case, in that scenario, do you think the 49ers would do that? They would pull the trigger and pay this man as much as someone like Dre is making right now. Yeah, I, I do. I think they'll pay up to about $3 million for, okay. for him. That's the number I was kind of thinking. 
Uh, I think that that's the value that he's earned with the way he played this season. Uh, he's very good against the run, run and decent against the pass. Um, not to the level Dre Greenlaw is. So once you sign that deal, of course, you need to work on an extension with Dre Greenlaw because he does need to be making more money than Aziz Al Shire. Um, but Al Shire has definitely proven you know, that he's going to be a player that you want on your roster. Uh, but playing 20 to 25% of the snaps, um, yeah, because you're hoping you're going to have a healthy Dre Greenlaw. And if that's the case, you just can't pay him too much money. And I don't think a team's going to come in there and offer him a tremendous amount. It's been one season you know, in this system playing with Fred Warner and playing with Dre Greenlaw. Uh, so I think that, yeah, he'll be valued, but I don't think over $3 million. Uh, I think $3 million would be the, the the highest end of that line. I think ideally what you want if you're the 49ers is to pay him too. I think if you're able to do like a, a, a one-year or a two-year deal at $2 million a year to see what he does, then great. That's what you want to do. Um, and then you want to extend Dre Greenlaw. Because here's the thing. Uh, Devondre Campbell is the projected market value for him right now is $6.8 million. That's all the number is per year, $6.8 million. Dre Greenlaw, you can go ahead and he's making two and two point five right now. You could bump that number up to three, so extend him for two years, two years at three million a year, and makes five hundred k more with some incentives built in to maybe push that number up to four and a half, maybe five, and and you're set and golden for the next at least three seasons. I think you're looking for for a deals for these guys that are you know two three year deals, um maybe even a four year deal in, in Dre Greenlaw's case, um but I think Greenlaw will make it upwards of four million dollars. I think that that's the value that he has on him, and that's the value that he'll have around the league. Um, so he's somebody that I think is going to get the contract extension that he that he deserves, and um, they're going to be able to work out the contract, you know, to be able to fit into what the 49ers want to do financially, um, especially against the salary cap. The good news is he won't be a huge hit. You can make that money, you know, you can spread it out over different seasons, um, make it kind of uh, opposite of what Fred Warner's contract is. You know, the, the years that are big for Fred, you can have Dre's number be low. Um, but really, you want to get him under contract right now before he explodes onto the scene. If for some reason next year in a free agent type season, um, he's able to just go off and make the Pro Bowl or, he, heaven forbid, go all the way to the All-Pro, be good for the Niners, um, but bad for them being able to re-sign him, um, then he's going to command that amount of money. He's going to be you know, needing $8 million. Go ahead and do it now. Strike while the iron's hot. Get this guy um, signed in under contract. And the same with Aziz. Um, two, three-year deal to secure that you have this linebacker core of the future. They already proved that they're willing to pay Quan Alexander amount, a lot of money. Um, so Fred Warner's money is not is not crazy, but this front seven is what the 49ers are built on. That's where they're going to spend their money, so it makes sense to spend it here. Uh, it truly does. It truly does. And if you're able to extend uh, Dre Greenlaw now and strike while the iron's hot before he blows up and has the big Pro Bowl, all-pro type season that you and I both think he's capable of having, and you're able to bring Aziz back in for a couple more years and at least keep – you know, all three of these guys for the next two to three, um, if not two of them for the next four, then you're in great position if you're the 49ers because that gives you plenty of time to go out and draft as well and find that eventual replacement for when one of these guys is going to go out and get paid big money. Yeah, I think that's what you're looking for. Uh, I think you would be looking for somebody to eventually replace Aziz Alshire only because he's not as good in coverage. And the way the league is going, you want to have these coverage guys. What I love about Aziz, though, is his physicality, um, the way that he brings it. And that's the other thing that Dre does. These guys are thumpers, and I think these guys playing together, um, you know, for a long time are going to build the camaraderie. They're going to be able to get after these run games, and you—that's the one thing. If you can stop the run, um, you can help protect yourself on the back end. You don't have to bring an eighth guy into the box to stop the run. It's important. So having all three of these guys together, healthy with the defensive line that you've been able to construct, uh, it, it gives you some opportunities to make some big time plays. So I'm, I'm hoping they're able to bring these guys back and work the money. Um, but they will not be priced out. If if something happens where somebody offers Aziz more money than what they're willing to pay, they will let him go uh, because D'Amico Ryans and this coaching staff knows they can develop somebody else. Correct. And you're thinking that number is about three million. Um, I, I would, I I I have a hard time believing they would want to pay more than two and a half. Um, you know what Dre makes right now. He he isn't what Dre is right now. But Dre's was a also a rookie contract. Correct. I, I correct. But Aziz has only done it for one year. And Dre's done it for a lot longer. Yeah, but Aziz also, he, he's come up with your organization. Yes. Um, you've seen the improvement. You know what he can become. And the way he flew around this year and the, and the plays that he made, uh, you see you know, what kind of impact he can make on your roster. But we're talking two and a half to three million. Talking if, about 500K. If you kick the extra nickel his way to show you know, what's up, I, I think he'll be very thankful for that. Well, I think um, he'll probably have a good yeah, year. He's going to have a good year next year. I, I, think that, I think two and a half, three million dollars is, is more than enough for Aziz Al Shair. I mean, if somebody's willing to come in and offer him a lot more, good for them, uh, because he he does have the ability to play Mike, and maybe the Jets would be interested in you know in moving moving to him and putting him at Mike. Um, he's going to be good in the run game, so 
Uh, maybe somebody does. I just don't think so. I think the 49ers are able to bring him back for that, you know, somewhere around, I think, $3 million is the top end. I would agree with you there. Um, we'll see what happens. So the Niners are going to have a lot of decisions to make, a lot of moves to make in ESPN. None of those moves will be dealing Dre Greenlaw. You son of my guns. If they put that on the ether and then it ends up happening, I am going to be a sad puppy. Well, we did float it a little bit last year when the whole Deshaun Watson stuff was going on. That's different. Um, than there that was, was talk Deshaun about, Watson. yeah, there was talk about this defensive starters and Dre Greenlaw was one of those guys that, uh, that uh, we thought they would be interested. in. That was different though. Yeah, of course it was going to get your quarterback of the future. Yeah, that, that was, yeah, that, that was entirely different. You're right. Different. Uh, I'm just saying no. that, that that's Dre Greenlaw. The, if they're not talking about you, it means you don't have value. Um, the fact that the ESPN is talking about him as a possible trade target is good. Uh, the, the problem is you have to be able to offer enough for Dre Greenlaw. I don't know. I'm sure teams are going to call, but the 49ers are going to have a very high opinion of Dre oh, Greenlaw. Okay. Texans call and offer Deshaun Watson for Dre Greenlaw and a first. No. Not at all. We have Trey Lance. I agree with you. There's no. some people right now in the comment section going, wait, what? No, no. A, a first and Dre for Deshaun Watson? Do it. I don't care how many potential people he may have rubbed. No, we have we have Trey Lance. We don't we're not going after Deshaun Watson at this point. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't think so. Not for not for a one, which would be twenty twenty four one and Dre Greenlaw. Accurate. Uh, would you wouldn't have first round pick for twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three, or twenty twenty four. We're basically with the Rams at this point, except yeah. we do have second and third round. Picks. No, I I don't think so. I think you're I think you're rolling with Trey at that point. All right. I I agree with you on that, Ant. But cut back crew. Let us know what you think down below right now. If we had to trade Dre Greenlaw, what would it take for you to want to pull the trigger on that trade, number one? Number two, do you even want that to be the case? And then number three, and most importantly, which of these linebackers do you want to see back in San Francisco? Every single one of them or just a couple of them? Is Aziz a must bring back for you? And how much would you be willing to pay for him? We want to hear from you down in the comment section below right now. So let us know all about it. And while you're doing that, don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell as well, because this is just one of many free agent discussions that we still have to have. We still have a ton of positions to talk about, a ton of players to talk about, and a lot of impact on this 49ers team with all of these potential signings coming in, including a big D-line one coming up down the line. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the 49ers have, you know, be between the guys they have currently on roster and then also the futures contracts that they have signed, they have about half of their 90 man roster put together, which means they're going to have to build the rest of it. And one of the ways it is, one of the ways you do it is to bring back the players, you know, the best, you're free agents, but you have to make sure the price is right. So the Niners are going to set a value on these guys. And if they meet that value, they're going to bring them back. And if they don't, um, they're going to have to say, you know, goodbye. But I am curious, you know, who the, who the people want to bring back, you know, who, who do the fans want to bring back from this linebacker group? Because I know a lot of people are very high on Al Shire and they were ready to move on from Drake Greenlaw. I wonder if they feel the same after seeing week 18 and then the playoff. Uh, especially after this this last loss with Drake Greenlaw going out, do you still feel like Dre needs to go? Or are you sitting here now going, well, maybe maybe Aziz is the guy in this group that isn't as important, and if you have to, you can only keep one, then you keep Dre and you move on from Aziz. Uh, I think the market value, a market value and what a team is willing to pay for Aziz is going to kind of influence that a little bit. Um, and once the Niners move off of Jimmy Garoppolo and you have that additional cap space, you'll have a better idea of what the Niners can do. And we'll see what kind of magic uh, Parag's pulling off with the with the cap gymnastics. And there's going to be some fun stuff going on all offseason yeah. long that none of you are going to want to miss. So make sure you're here for all of it. Make sure you're commenting away down below. And make sure you stay tuned because this is just one of many more discussions that we're going to be having on the channel. And until the next one, cut back crew and the faithful. Stay safe. Remember the right way is always the 49ers way.